All right, welcome everyone to today's session of Map Time Davis. Uh, my name is Michelle Tobias. I am the Geospatial Data Specialist at UC Davis Data Lab. And today um, we're going to have a presentation from Karen Beardsley, um, who works in global affairs. Um, before we get into our materials for today, I just wanted to give you a brief intro into um, what map time is for those of you who are new. Um, map time is literally time for making maps and map time Davis is our local version of map time. Um, and it's uh, map time is a thing that kind of happens around the globe uh, where people get together uh, to spend time learning how to make maps in some way, shape, or form. And our local version, MapTime Davis, tends to focus a little bit more heavily on research skills for mapping. Um, and we we cover a lot of different topics uh, because of that. So that's what we are doing today. Um, I'm going to paste some links for you in the chat. Um, these are you will see I labeled them. Um, we've got our schedule for our upcoming workshops. We've got some really cool things coming up uh, in our Map Time Davis schedule, um, including we've got um, Python and um, Earth Engine. We've also got, um, what else have we got? Oh, I, I'm teaching a workshop on uh, cartography for journal figures. So if you are interested in learning how to make figures that are good for publication with Map data, um, join us for that. Um, there's also a link to our YouTube channel where we will be posting the recordings from the workshops. Um, we've managed to get the ones up from previous workshops uh, during the pandemic that we recorded. So check those out if you missed one that you want to see and we'll get this quarter's um, workshops posted as soon as I get the chance. Um, there's also a link there to the workshop materials for today. Um, so Karen has assembled some slides for us um, and she'll explain more about how we're going to use um, the materials and uh, the workshop she's planned. But um, yeah, so I guess I will hand it over to Karen, who has uh, graciously prepared this workshop for us today about ArcGIS Insights. And I'm really looking forward to understanding more about how this particular tool works. So I'm going to hand it off to Karen and say, take it away. Okay, thank you, Michelle. And um, thanks. It's great to be here today. And and I have to say, just as a as a start, I'm doing this workshop because I thought RTS Insights looked really cool, but I didn't really know much about it. So I dug in a little bit deep, and um, I I don't probably have all the answers, but I really want to be able to help you know how to get started with this a, a topic. It's an app in RTS Online. And, and, and many others. So I'm going to share, you know, resources here and and resources for RTS Insights, but and also for other types of things that you may want to do with GIS. So another thing I'll say, so so Michelle introduced me. My name's Karen Beardsley. I have been at UC Davis um, for forever, um, probably <laughs> approaching 30 years now. Um, I was actually an undergrad here and I um, majored in applied math back in the 1980s. I went off and joined the Peace Corps in Kenya for a couple of years, and I came back, worked a little, then I went to and got my master's in geography from uh, UC Santa Barbara. I kind of caught the GIS bug along there and uh, in, in that time frame, actually, when I was in Africa. And then I, um, I, I came to work for UC Davis in um, the like 1994. And where I worked first was a was a group called um, Information Center for the Environment, where Michelle and um, Alex, I, I don't see Alex on today, but we all know each other from from the days back then. That's um, I also met Carlos from there, who is uh, an um, IT and now GIS expert, uh, and he manages the ArcGIS Online account for UC Davis. So I am a longtime ArcGIS user. So it used to be called ArcInfo. And then there was ArcView, and now there's ArcGIS and all these different applications. So today we're going to focus on ArcGIS Online. And, um, and again, I so, so MapTime Davis does a lot of different GIS programs. I am I'm someone who does not like to write code. I like to be able to, to maneuver and work with data without having to write, you know, R or Python or you know anything. I, I did that a long time ago in my it was it was different programs, but I've I've decided not to be a programmer. So everything I show you today is you know it, you don't need to do any programming. And um, so again, the exciting thing about ArcGIS Insights is it's very much like Tableau. And many of you have heard of Tableau, which is a way to visualize your data, kind of look at data in relation to other data, um, create charts and graphs and maps and 
you know, you have standard de deviations and means and other kinds of statistics kind of right at your fingertips. So ArcGIS Insight does that with, with all sorts of data. You can bring in different all sorts of different data resource, uh, resources and sources. So you can have Excel files, you can have CSV files, you can have um, shape files, um, geodatabases, uh, any you'll see in, as I as I bring up the slides. So it's very versatile, it's pretty easy to use, and then you can share the information out like you do other things in ArcGIS Online. So with that sort of introduction, um, let me let me go ahead and start the um, PowerPoint. And this is the PowerPoint that if you click on that under workshop materials, you'll get the PDF of this PowerPoint if you want to follow along as I go through the PowerPoint. So everyone see the workshop materials and the and the box folder. It's on box, and you by clicking on the link, you should all have access. Okay, cool. All right, I am going to share my screen here. Whoops, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Hang on. Um, it's all about um, managing all these screens, right? Okay, I'm going to now share. Oh, that didn't seem to work. All right, let me try that. Oh, again. it looks good. Oh, does it? You can yeah. see it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get that. Well, because it's not outlined in green, and usually it is. Okay. So everyone can see this, the title slide that says ArcGIS Insights. Yes. Okay. Lots of thumbs up. Okay. So um, the subtitle to this uh, this workshop is, um, well, it's ArcGIS Insights, and then the subtitle, and how to get started with this and other ArcGIS Online apps. So I want this to be more than just about ArcGIS Insights. Um, so the first thing that anyone is going to need to do is to have an ArcGIS Online account. Uh, and if you are part of UC Davis, this is your UC Davis Kerberos login. And um, when I get to the end of this presentation, I'm going to come back to this and log in and make sure everyone's logging in correctly. But for now, if you know how to do that, that's going to be great. That's going to be our starting point. Okay, ucdavis.maps.arcgis.com. You just have to be really careful that you you click the big blue button that says Kerberos login. You don't pull down, it says ArcGIS login and you don't enter there. You have to click the Kerberos button. So we'll do that together in a minute. Okay, once you do that, you end up at, you will see this nice, beautiful screen. And, and the place, the easiest way to get Ar to ArcGIS Insights is to click these nine dots. And these nine dots, when you click on them, you'll see story maps, survey one, two, three, dashboards, map viewers, ArcGIS Online, Hub, all these different things. And then you'll see Insights. Now yours won't look like mine because we all, all we sort of can customize what this looks like. If Insights doesn't show up, you can actually go to the bottom and there's kind of a more button and it'll show more and you should be able to find insights, but it's going to look like this this kind of orangey with two box and a little squiggly, you know, tilde thing in the middle. So that's what it'll look like. Again, we'll do that together as we move forward. Once you click on insights, you're going to get this homepage. I suspect most of you will have it empty at the beginning. You won't have any recent workbooks. And actually this, I took the screenshot before I did today's lesson. So that the one that we did today on Illinois redistricting is not even showing up. But I did a, a quick analysis um, back in August when we were looking at um, Humphrey Fellowship Program rental rates um, at, for the different host campuses. So all of us host campuses and the Humphrey Fellows who are here will appreciate this. Are, you know, it's it, the, the rent prices keep skyrocketing and they're not getting extra money to cover rent. So I wanted to pull together some data and look at that. Probably won't have time to go over that today, but that's what kind of got me down this path of wanting to really start working with, with insights. Okay, there's another really nice lesson called Ottawa Cycling Accidents um, that I will, I, I will have, a, I have a link that will help you get to that one too. So again, part of my job today is to share with you how to self-teach. Um, and that's, I do this all the time. If I want to learn something, I self-teach, I find it, and I work on it. Okay, so what is ArcGIS Insights? Why are we even bothering with this? And here's sort of the, you know, the classical, uh, you know, description of it. Um, be, and, and the important part that it lets you do iterative and exploratory data analysis. It lets you answer questions with data from many, many different sources. You basically click pieces of them and drag them and drop them. And it's it's pretty easy to do. So 
that's kind of why it's interesting. Again, Tableau is the program that it's probably most closely related to. So I went, I um, sent an email a couple of uh, days ago, I believe, to, uh, to our ESRI higher education representatives. Um, well, the main one is, is uh, uh, Rena. So uh, Cancer Rena Kernia. And um, I got back sort of a, here, here's, here's a slideshow deck from ESRI that they gave at the 2022 ESRI user conference. Super, super short. But it, I want to just go through that because, and actually the only slide that really is interesting is the main one is this one. A lot of things on this slide, but it does help you sort of see some of the examples of the things that you can do and ways that you can visualize your data. The fact that it supports lots of connections, it has these rich analytics, um, you know, smart mapping and charting, shareable interactive reporting. And, and the kind of really cool thing, and I'll show you an example of this, is it can be integrated into a story map. So a story map is a, another app um, that RTS Online provides that you can basically develop a story. And there's a whole gallery of various ways that people have done this. And definitely worth looking at that to maybe get some ideas of how you might have some data, you want to tell a story about it, you and you want to do a story map with, and embed that sort of ArcGIS Insights data. So that's kind of where all that's going. Um, so again, it, it's it's data visualization. It lets you do exploratory analysis. Um, it does let you do report building, although we're not going to do that today. Um, and what I love, it's it can be for non-GIS users and no coding. There's no coding. I mean, you can write code. There are ways, there's always places for you to write code to make things, you know, more, um, uh, if you're doing sort of a whole bunch of processes, you can do that. You can make special symbols and all that kind of thing, but but you don't need it. And that that's the point. Okay. So by connecting with different data, it helps you with more knowledge and answers and ideas um, of, of how to add kind of value to your data. And, and, and then you share it with others. So you share uh, your insight workbook much as you would share a, um, a dashboard or share a survey. It's the same sharing, um, um, same process for sharing that you would use in those cases. That, so this just kind of shows that Insights is available in ArcGIS Online, and this is the one that we're going to be looking at. It's also part of ArcGIS Enterprise, if you have a server and you've got Enterprise um, running on that server. And then the interesting thing I noted is that it also has Insights Desktop, and it works on Windows and a Mac. So that's kind of interesting to me because, you know, something like ArcGIS Pro Desktop does not work on a Mac. So Carlos, I, I, I kind of wanted to ask you at this point, do you know if we at UC Davis have, have access to that um, the desktop version of Insights? I've only seen it in ArcGIS Online. Uh, it is actually in our license and I'm gonna link something here. Uh, this is a page that we put together as a consortium of all the UCs that kind of gives a overall description of what's included in our licenses. Um, and so there is a line item in there that's like, yeah. Uh, insights for desktop. Um, right. So that is not something that we've generally gotten requests for. So we don't have the download available right now. But okay, if, right. And I see you're saying some of the older accounts might not have it. Uh, so yeah, that's for ArcGIS Online. I'm looking about five thousand of our eight thousand accounts have the license assigned. Mm -hmm. So our original three thousand accounts probably don't. Didn't. I want, I'm probably one of those. <laughs> <laughs> might be, but uh, I've marked um, that that's something we'll go back and true up for. But in the meantime, if you can't, if it if you try to get in and it's not there, email okay. through support and we'll get okay. it. Okay, and again, this can be really interest, interesting, particularly for Mac users, because I know that it's always hard to tell everyone you can't use ArcGIS Pro, but it would be nice if, I mean, you can do it online. There's no problem with that, but sometimes you do want to maybe use a desktop version. So it does work on a Mac, which is shocking to me. Um, so I want to just mention in the chat, I saw that um, Veronica added that instead of going to where I went and clicking on those little nine dots to open insights, you can just go to insights.arcgis.com. It's the same thing. So thank you for sharing that, um, Veronica. Okay, so this this next slide is is where um, it actually is an active. If you're following the PDF, 
it actually takes you to this gallery of insights um, examples. And th this really nice one is about, um, about migratory birds. And um, so if you click on that, let's see if it's gonna do anything. It is of course, but somewhere else. Now, if I bring, can you see the other uh, window that I just brought over or is it not showing? Um, it's see really it. small. Okay, it's there getting we go. Okay. Yeah. Good. So I can pull this kind of in front of the other one and you can see it. Okay. So when you click on that, you get this, this um, gallery examples from the insights community and this bird population migration analysis is a really neat one to look at, but there's, you know, in search of refuge insights within a story map. These are a lot of these are within a story map um, looking at forced displacement between 1951 and 2017. Um, global terrorism database, uh, lifeboat call outs along that, you know, whatever, and, you know, Stanley Cup winners if you're into hockey. So, so these are just really interesting and it goes on and on. So there's a whole lot of these examples that are given. So, you know, if you just click on one of them, I hope again, this is still showing, but this is the one on the bird migration. Where did they go? This is a story map. Great title. Where did they go? Exploring bird populations and migrations using RTS insights. It has the whole story, this kind of goal, and then it, it embeds these insights and you see the little thing spinning as it's trying to it's pulling that up inside of there. Um, talking about the different um, species, you know, you can sort of click on, click on these and um, you know it it's going to everything's kind of connected so it reacts. Um, Again, so again, the, what I have clicked on this one, this is giving us the, the wingspan and the average mass of this limosa marbled godwit species. So again, you know, it's just the data is coming in from insights and you interact with it in the story, right? So, um, and, and you go on and there's, um, there's a whole lot in here. There's another insight. I, I don't wanna spend too much time with this, but I just wanna welcome you to look at that gallery and pick some of those existing uh, stories with that have insights embedded and um, and and interact with them and see what people have done. You know, they, in the, they can have a map together with charts together with different kinds of graphics that pull data together. So back at that gallery, and then you can just click on different ones. Okay. Any any questions uh, so far? Hey, Karen. It's Naomi. Yeah. Um, you might get to this later, but can I ask how this is different from the dashboard app? And it's okay if this is for later, but yeah, well, it's a, it ha, it's a totally different way of interacting with the data. I mean, a dashboard you you pull you, you normally start with a a web map and then you pull in data and you can create charts, but they're they're pretty simplistic. This is much more of a you know statistical. Um, uh, it has higher capabilities for visualizing data than than a dashboard. Dashboard is really more for keeping counts. It does let you sort of filter data, but it it, it is a really different interface. Um, you can also, I think, dashboard's a little awkward bringing in other file types, um, whereas this you you know you drag and drop um, Excel files and um, and and so on. So that is a good that is a good question. Thank you. Yeah, this looks a lot like Tableau. It's a lot like way Tableau. cooler. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was the end of the Esri slide. So what, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking um, at, at under ArcGIS Online, and we're going to look under products, and then we're going to see that there are lots and lots of little learning lessons for learning how to work with, with um, insights. We're just, I just picked one of them that I thought would be relatively simple that we could get done in roughly an hour and give people a chance to kind of get introduced to this. So, but this is where you can just take off. The other thing is uh, there is actually a whole, what they call a learning path um, for insights. So it kind of has um, some additional information. It says, all right, well, do, you know, you watch a video and you do an exercise and then maybe you learn how to write a report. So it kind of walks you through all the steps. So that's another link. Um, so I, I, well, I guess I can just click on these because then I can share them with you. So let me just click on both of these and then I'll pull back over the, um, the window here. 
So learn.arcgis is just, uh, it's one of my favorite things for, for learning anything new or even just beefing up skills in an area. So you can start with an experience. There's different ways you can get into it. You can start with an experience as a new user, a professional, a data scientist, et cetera. You can kind of look at it by different types of capability, but I like to go in by product. So if you click explore product, that's not what I meant. No, I just online. There we go. So um, here you can, you sort of can do a bit of filtering. And if you click on RTS online, notice you could say, well, I'm interested in learning dashboards. I'm interested in learning drone to map. I'm interested in learning field maps. You pick what you want. Um, in this case, you pick insights. And this is where there's a, a whole lot of short little lessons for learning how to use this technology. So you pick the thing that's most interesting to you. If you're into, you know, if you're in the medical field and you want to visualize COVID-19 trends, you might do this lesson. It takes an hour. Um, if you want to learn how to create a report, that one takes 50 minutes. Um, you know, there's a there's actually quite a bunch, quite a few um, um, COVID ones that you can uh, you can see. And again, the one that that I looked at was this analyzing impacts of congressional redistricting with RTS insights. And that's the one we'll do today. If you don't want to do that one when we start, please pick another one, because the whole idea is for you to learn something that's of interest to you. I really want to share these resources and then I'm, I'm happy to get you started on this one that I've picked. But again, it's it's there's so much here. There's so much capability. So there also is this sort of uh, path that says, okay, try ArcGIS Insights. So you get started, including about including learning about interactivity, performing spatial analysis, and creating reports. So this is sort of this cycling collisions in Ottawa, Canada. You can sort of click on it, and um, you can kind of read about it, and it shows you uh, the the data. Uh, so this is looking at there's all this data on where uh, vehicles have uh, crashed into bicycles and how people have been you know hurt so it's got information about all that put into a little story very very short uh, if we go back to here then there's a, a lesson getting started this is the first one i did actually was using um, these looking at this data in ottawa canada i haven't even done this create a report and then create your first script so those of you that like to code you get a chance to write scripts um, in that insight scripting environment so you can take it a little further. So that's another thing that's pretty cool. Um, so those are those links from the learning resources. And I, I also just wanted to share a couple of other really neat links that I've seen recently. So one of them is there was a, there, there's several workshops for higher education that I tend to, to go to um, online once a month. And one of them was about smart mapping with ArcGIS Online. So this is a story map that takes you through a, a again, uh, several activities uh, to learn how to symbolize and work with maps within, um, within, whoops, I need to try to click on this, there we go, within um, ArcGIS Online. So if we bring that one up, again, it's a story map about smart mapping. So what is it and how and why to use it in higher education? So what is smart mapping? How do you teach it? Um, some examples. So you can start having, you know, different working with different sorts of data and how to best display them. And this walks you through a series of activities for, for working with different types of data. So again, self-paced, walk through it yourself, applying smart mapping to a table of data. Maybe the second this goes through and gives you specific instructions. Another one is examining in, uh, internet access by census tract. Um, the third one is mapping the relationship between drinking and smoking in the United States. Uh, and I know I'm going through this fast, but I think, and the fourth one is comparing types of power plants. Um, so global power plants, comparing them to countries that are using predominantly renewable energy versus fossil fuels. Okay. So I know that's a different topic, but I just wanted to share that as, again, something um, that's really easy to learn and a, a nice um, a way to learn it. The other one, the last thing that I'll show you that's kind of non insights related is um, a, a whole set of curriculum and there are many of them for different topics, this one is for health systems modernization. 
And uh, this was done by the chief medical officer at Esri um, named Esti Garrity. And uh, I actually was on a, a panel, uh, well, you call it an advisory panel to kind of help develop what, pe what aspects of training should be in that curriculum. So I'm gonna bring that up here one bit. So if you click on that link, you get, um, and again, you're seeing it when I bring the window over, right? Just wanna make sure. You're seeing the health systems information system modernization. Thumbs up. Uh-oh, there we go. Thank you, Naomi. Okay, so this is like, if you, if you are involved in public health and, um, and you wanna use GIS, for this, not even necessarily public health, but this has a whole series of, and we'll go to the table of contents, a series of things that you can learn first. It's kind of small, but first the fundamentals, then the power of population mapping, then preparing data for GIS workflows, field operations and management, data visualization and analysis, and sharing engagement and collaboration. So this whole thing probably takes about, I don't know, it's like four hours, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So maybe 20, 30 hours of time. And yet it walks you through uh, these different sections so that you can really learn and then it has them more detailed. So it's, it's in chunks and it really helps you self learn in a particular area. Okay. So again, I, I, I'm just giving you an overview. These links are in, um, in the, the PowerPoint. The other thing, and I'm not even going to click on these right now, but my one of my favorite higher education people, Joseph Kursky, um, many of you have seen his uh, his videos. He's a very entertaining um, uh, GIS professional who works for Esri, actually. And he has a he just he just I think yesterday uh, provided this um, set of this sort of blog on how you would teach GIS to the general public. He also has a whole course on um, environmental GIS course that he shared. So these are just great ways to learn and then also to learn how you share GIS data with a broad audience, okay? Um, GIS day is coming up. I think it's November 16th, am I right? 18th, Ooh. anyone know? <laughs> It's always a Wednesday. It's, it's like the week before Thanksgiving, I think. Yeah, it's the Wednesday, the week before Thanksgiving. So that's a day when, you know, you really, it, it, the idea is to just share what GIS is with a broader audience so they can see how it might be useful to them. Okay, so two more links to look at. Um, and then finally, we are coming to what we're going to do today. So this is the link um, to the actual um, lesson. So that's where you will click. I just wanted to go one more and show you what it's going to look like at the end. So this is my Illinois redistricting that I did um, very recently just to show it. The idea is we're going to have some data about um, percent of different uh, ethnic groups, and this is in the Chicago area. And you know, there's a lot here and you'll go through what the data is, but I, I just wanted to point out sort of the, the, the thing that you look at and you kind of say, wow. And that is if you, these are different plans for how to draw boundaries for voting districts, okay? Um, and if you look near Chicago, actually, if you click on this, it takes you to the interactive version of this. I, this is just a screenshot, but actually it's clickable. It takes you to my version that I shared earlier today. But the point is, look, look at the difference right here in plan three where um, the percent of the black population is in, in um, these blue colors, right? As you get darker blue, it's got a higher percent of black population and, and the, the yellows are much lower percent. So if you draw the lines different ways, it's, it's determining what percentage of that district will be of what ethnic group, which often determines how people are, are voting, whether they're gonna vote Republican or Democrat, for example. Um, so here in the third plan, you notice that this whole area here that is a, a large percentage of um, black population gets brought back into one that already had a large population. And then this, this um, polygon becomes probably more predominantly white. It doesn't have uh, that. So that's probably gonna maybe, it could change the outcome of that, that district. So again, that, that so we, we can look at different percentages, we can graph them together. And so then we can put each graph under the map that it represents. 
The cool thing too is is also um, as you zoom in in one of these maps, all of the other maps zoom in too. So it really helps you compare information across these different plans. Okay. All right. What did Carlos just put there? Okay, you see we great. Okay, for GIS day. So I just am looking at the chat here. Okay. So um, that's it for the slides. So um, I'm going to pause for a moment and then. If there's a no questions, we're going to jump in and we're going to do the we're going to log sign into ArcGIS online and we're going to pull up the, the lesson and we're going to start working on it. Um, and you can work on it now, you can work on it later. I will start by sh I'll start by doing it with everyone. And then, um, you know, you can just keep moving faster on your own, however you want to do it. Um, so. Are there before we do that, um, let me just I'm going to stop the share for just a moment and see if there's any questions or discussion. I think mostly we've been plugging UCGIS week in the chat as you've been talking so <laughs> um, and, and honestly Joseph Kursky is going to be talking at UCGIS week um, i'm on the programming committee so um, if you want to meet him he'll be around. Um, and We've got a lot of other good speakers too so. Um, and is that um, so it's the whole week, Monday through Thursday, or is it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or what is it? All okay. right, I was trying to get my video to start and it wasn't going. Yay, Zoom. Um, so it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, which is November 15th through 17th. Um, there's going to be a lot of good speakers too. So not to take away from today's uh, event, which is super useful as well, but um, some of the folks that Karen's been talking about are going to be speaking at this other thing too. It's completely free. It's online. Um, you can register and, and join in the parts that you have time for, and it should be should be really good. Um, I'm on the planning Great. committee, and Carlos is involved a little bit too, so um, lots of good stuff going on. Yeah, and I, I made the mistake of, of signing up to teach a CPE class uh, Wednesday through Friday, so oh. unfortunately, that's why I was asking. Unfortunately, I guess I, I'll, I'll try to pack it all in on Tuesday, so... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's gonna be a lot of good stuff on Tuesday too. So if you can come one day, um, is that when Joseph Kursky's talking? I don't know. I haven't looked at the details, but uh, um, we are uh, confirming speakers currently, so we'll have details pretty soon. Okay, and um, Humphrey Fellows, uh, just a shout out. That's a great opportunity to to learn more about you know GIS, learn what people are doing. I think there's also workshops too, right? Are there? Sort of yeah, the um, there's only one workshop. It's the one I'm teaching for. It's cross listed for both of them. But you all, everyone's welcome to join any of the things for for both. So so okay. sign up and and join us. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. So with that, are we ready to jump in, dive in head first? Okay. Um, let me just escape out of the PowerPoint. Now, when you, um, sorry, I'm doing a little bit of, um, there we go. Okay. Uh, sorry, screen management here. I'm going to share my screen in just a minute. Uh, let's share screen. Two. Okay. If you click on that learn.arcgis.com and you click on analyze impacts of Congressional redistricting with ArcGIS Insights. It, it was up in the chat a bit earlier. We can, I don't know if we need to redo it. Um, okay, thank you. Somebody put it in. There we go. All right. So if you click that, this is what you get when you when you are in learn.arcgis.com. You get this uh, uh, an entire lesson, and it's in sort of this format. It'll say when when it was last tested. So this is actually a, a while ago. March 30th was the last time somebody tested it. What happens is when new versions of the software come out, you know, things might change a little bit. So uh, that, that's kind of a nice thing to um, to see when it was last um, tested. But it works fine. I just went through it myself. So you the requirements are to have an RTS online account and you do not need a free trial I hope if if you're not with UC Davis then um, Naomi can probably help you learn how to get a free trial or sign up um, for, for something that you can use um, if you are with uh, UC Davis remember to go to that maps oh, sorry UC Davis maps.artgis.com 
Now it's going to take me in logged in, but if you aren't logged in, it'll look like this, right? You sign out, it's going to look more like, come on. It's unhappy that I'm signing out. I never have sign out work, <laughs> to be honest. I always just refresh. Sign out doesn't work. Sign out. <laughs> I think I can just do this, delete and enter again, and it should, it shouldn't find me. Yeah. Yeah, that's so right. it would it would look like this when you first get there, and that's when you want to sign in. And again, never go here. Always go to that blue Kerberos. Otherwise, you're it won't accept it. And I I know that people that um, from the Humphrey Fellows have this issue. So again, remember that. Um, and you sign in with your um, it's actually with your email, not with your Kerberos. It says it's going to be. I guess it's the same thing. It's just you're not with your ID, it's with your email address. They're both supposed to work. But... Really? Okay. <laughs> See, good thing we have Carlos. And then of course you have to do duo, right? Everyone has to do duo. I have it on my watch, so. Okay. And you get your acceptable use. And then it looks like it did a minute ago with the, um, With your showing that you're signed in. Okay. Any problems so far? Those of you that are following along. Okay. And then remember, there's kind of two ways to enter insights. Um, you can click on those nine buttons and you can find insights there. Uh, I think once I'm logged in, I should also be able to just come up here and type in insights. GIS.com should be the exact same thing. And of course, it's going straight to my redistricting one. Let's go back to here um, again and go to insights. Okay. So you probably see something like this, but with no workbooks, right? Um, so mine is going to show this Illinois redistricting that I just did today and, and other things that I have here. Um, now, if I, I need to follow along the instructions. So if I go back to um, my directions, which are in a different window. So again, bear with me with my windows here. Um, Well, if I can't find it, then I can always just search if there is lesson gallery. Where do we go from? There it is. It's right to the far left. So one thing that I think is important, one thing I've done is pulled out that tab for that actual description and made it a separate tab. That way you can have it on one screen and then you can actually look at your ArcGIS Insights on the other screen if you happen to have two screens. You can also, you know, a lot of people just kind of do the halfway thing um, where you have half your screen one thing and half the other. Um, this gets a little tedious, but you know, however you want to do it. Uh, so it that's, you know, it tells you your requirements. Now you're all logged in and then we have access to insights. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is explore a plan. We're going to kind of look at the demographics. So to do that, we have to first import a workbook. So it gives you the data here and there's these three links. And what you need to do is download each of these, they're, um, they're zip files. I believe they're all zip files. So, you know, you can click on each of them and then just pick a place to store them on your, in your documents folder, okay? So I click on the first one, it, it puts a zip file down here and I can, um, you know, I can show in folder. And I would probably, you know, it puts it in downloads, right? I can, um, 
I can copy or cut that and go to documents. And I, what I did is I created an insights lesson and I just put it there, right? So right click paste. And I got the zip file and then the second, then there's a plan one shape file and a plan three shape file. So you do the same thing with those. So you end up with these three zip files initially. So hopefully some of you are working on that. Again, it gives you links to the data. The top one, the redistricting workbook, you're going to actually unzip and extract, which is what I've done here. The other two you leave as zip files. The reason is when you bring them into insights, it wants them as a zip file. Okay, so don't unzip those, leave those. These are actually shape files, plan one shape file and plan three shape file. Okay. Are there any questions so far? Kind of just going through this. Um, how many of you are actually walking through this? Can you raise your hand or can you put a check mark if you're actually going through this? Okay, Carlos, Michelle, nobody else, Naomi, <laughs> I saw, okay, Emilio, great. Okay, so some of you actually are doing it um, and Jayung Kim is doing it. Okay, great. So when you get to this point where you have without this one, right, you have these three Illinois redistricting, Illinois plan one and Illinois plan three files on your hard drive. You're going to go to Illinois redistricting and you're going to want to um, extract and do do do. I think it should say, there we go. So you click on it, extract, extract all. So however your computer works, but click the extract all and just save it in the same folder, okay? Really slow, extract all, hello. I guess it's not letting me do it again. Anyway, what you want to do is take that Illinois redistricting and unzip it. So you should have Illinois redistricting. It's a folder. If you look at it, it's a workbook. Okay. So you unzip it. It's an Illinois redistricting insights workbook. Okay. And that's what you need to be able to move forward. And you need these files on your computer. Okay, ready to move on? If you're not, you can you can catch up. Okay, so with that, um, I'm going to move that away. So, uh, so you move them and you extract. It tells you to do that, and then you sign into Insights, which I've already done. Okay. And if you're if you're this is your first time, there'll be sort of an welcome to insights. You can skip that if you want, or you can go through it. Uh, but when you get through all that, you're going to be here, and you're going to basically click on um, workbooks. Okay. And there's going to be a button. Now, see, it's not going to show. There's going to be an import button at the far right, as it tells you on the ribbon, click import. So you're here in workbooks, you click import. Okay. You may have to navigate to wherever it was that you saved that um, workbook, but you go into the Illinois redistricting. I was at my front door. Okay. You check, you choose that workbook and you click open. Hey, yeah, the next, Karen. Yeah. Hey, Karen, quick question. Can you show, can you show me where the Import, but I see a big picture on your screen, but it's not matching my screen. <laughs> it says new work oh, okay. import. 
Um, Are you seeing the workbooks thing? It's like way over here to the right. You see that? I'm having the same issue where it oh. doesn't have those buttons. Okay, so we come back. Yeah, I see the same big blue ribbon with our insights. And it's it like books, but oh, sorry, let me minimize my screen so I can see yours. Oh, I do, I see that. Okay, then you click on workbooks. Okay, sorry, yeah. two screens, let me, then click on workbooks. I, and I might in this. The search is all the way over to the right side and there's no import. Uh, I wonder I wonder if we just don't have it enabled because we're we're old users, as Carlos termed us. Uh, <laughs> well, can you go? So if you go here, do you see inside? No. And and when you go show more, do you, you don't see it? No, there wasn't an option. I got to it through the the link that Veronica had posted and that right, let me but you probably don't have access. That could be. Too. Oh, I have the old, you know, we did a workshop on this a few, I don't know, weeks, months ago. I have the William Land Park Improvement Initiative workbook that I made at some point. So there's something. Wasn't that a hub? Isn't that a hub one? That's not, that's not, um, that's hub. Yeah. And I've got new folder, favorites, view items, sort, list view got pages. Does anyone besides Naomi and Michelle have this issue where that you don't see import? Are other people seeing the import link? Because if, if that is the case, then I'm guessing it's just we don't have it enabled. Um, so Emilio, are you saying you do see import? Or you do not? You do? You don't? Well, that kind of ruins it, I'll tell you. Well, maybe Karen, can you just walk us, like show sure. us how it works and then when we get it enabled, yeah. then we'll be able to do it on our own later. Yeah, I can do that. So um, so I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make this one big just because I wanna be able to see the whole thing. And I'm gonna look at my instructions on another window, but I assume you, you all have your instructions open. So I'll sort of say which step I'm on. Does that work? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. All right. So, um, so I'm going to click the import and I'm going to import that one that I was talking about. So I can actually search under Illinois. I notice I have, <laughs> I have two of them. Um, I think I'm going to do the second one because uh, it's, I think it's going to be not the one that I, that I did all the work on yet. Let's make sure that's true. No, that's not true. Okay, hang on. Let's close this. Um, let me go back. Back. This one. Okay. So this is what's going to come up. It's going to come up to, um, so I clicked on Illinois. It's going to come up here and it's going to say, um, I'm going to click add to, under add to page. I'm going to pick upload file. If you're following the directions, I click upload file. And then I'm going to browse to that file on my computer. Okay. Or I can drag and drop it. But if I browse it, I'm going to go to that place that I saved it. Um, which was ArcGIS Insights Lesson. And I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick <laughs> upload file. Oh, I'm going to, sorry, what I'm uploading now is the, the actual data. So the Illinois Plan 1, um, it's the shape file. So I'm going to open that. And notice that shows up now. And I'm going to click Add. And I'm I'm on I'm on step three. Okay, step three. Click on Illinois Plan Add. Okay. So the data then step four. You click Add. The data is added to the first page of the workbook, and it shows up here in the left area, the pane. Okay. I can I can expand that and see all the different um, attributes of that data. 
And then if I scroll down, I see the ones that we're really interested in because we're interested in um, in uh, looking at this census data and look, it re represents the counts of voting age populations over 18 in different ethnic categories. So we have Hispanic, non-Hispanic, white, non-Hispanic, black, non-Hispanic, um, American Indian, Alaskan, non-native, non-Hispanic, sorry, native, non-Hispanic, and Asian, non-Hispanic, and then native Hawaiian. So these are all, you see all these here, okay? And um, then if you go to step six, it says in the data pane, we're gonna click district. Okay, so you click district. And we're gonna create a map. So we pick district and then we just click on this little map button, right? Select data to create a map. And it creates a map. There's a map, okay. So these are districts in the state of Illinois. So this is called a map card. Um, if we click away from it, it just names it card one. And when we click up here, we have all these different options to actually work with that card, that map card. Okay. Um, so you can kind of zoom around and kind of look at what they are. You can click, notice as we, a hover over each of them. It tells us the name of the district, okay, et cetera. All right, so I'm now into the section that says create charts. Does everyone see that? Hey, Karen, looks like we yeah. have a, a question in the chat. I think it's a pause here for a second. Okay, uh, by clicking the district, what are you supposed to do? Okay, so when you click on district, you come up to this button right here that says select data to create map. And when you click on that, it will just automatically create that map. Did you get that? Thumbs up. Yes, perfect. Okay. Shall we keep going? Okay, now we're going to create charts. So if you're following again, it's the next section and we're gonna be at step one of the next section that's called create charts. So insights lets you perform exploratory analysis of your data by adding fields to various cards, such as maps, tables, and charts. And we're gonna create charts to analyze black, non-Hispanic, white, non-Hispanic, and Hispanic categories. And again, this the reason for all this is because we're looking at different ways people are drawing the boundaries for districts, and those districts are for selecting your representative in the US Congress, right? And um, some of you may have heard of what, of, of um, gerrymandering districts. Have you heard that term, gerrymandering? And that is when you draw the boundaries so that you pull ethnic, um, different ethnic groups, you know, with weird boundaries into the same boundary. So then the one next to it doesn't have that ethnic group. And then it's more likely, you know, to, to go the other way. And again, it tends to, I'm not trying to be political here, but it tends to be Republicans who are trying to redraw these boundaries to group all the ethnically diverse people into one district so that a multitude of other districts will not be ethnically diverse and will be Republican rep represented by Republicans and group all the ones with um, ethnic diversity into one place. So then they just get one representative and maybe those around get three or four when it's not really representative of the people who live in that overall area. So again, you can't be, you can't really be non-political when you talk about this, but um, the point is that we're using, we're using data to look at this. I mean, this is real data. This is not made up data. So that's one reason I really liked this exercise because it is working with real life data that shows this. In the end, it actually shows that this is happening given these different plans, these different possible ways to draw the, the boundaries. Okay, so on step one, um, and again, you know, I'm just, if you can follow along on here too, I'm just not, whoops, whoa, where did my, main one go. Now it's gone. Everything's gone. Hang on. Um, okay, it's back, right? Can you see it again? 
Fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So in the data pane, I'm going to click district and I'm going to clean pick the black the district is picked and I'm going to pick um, the black NH18 right so I've got those two chosen. I'm going to drag that onto the workbook below the map card and then I'm going to pick table so I'm going to grab this I'm going to go below here and I'm going to make a new table. And actually now I'm going to say, well, wait a minute, that's not really, I really wanted a chart. So I'm going to click on chart and I'm going to pick what type of chart? I'm going to pick a tree map. So even though the first time I put it there, I put it under table, right? I can come back and I can make it um, a chart, okay? So if, if you say, well, I forget that, I'm gonna do it over again, I just deleted it. Don't, you don't need to do that, but if you had problems, let's just do it one more time, pick district, pick black, um, it's district, and that one, I pull it down here. And actually, let's just go straight to chart, and we can pick, um, it's disappearing, I can pick um, tree map. Okay. So what does that tree map do? So it shows us each district as a box, the size of the box indicating the value in that field. So you can kind of see where the largest black non-Hispanic population is, that's district 10. Now, if I look at district 10, it's a teeny, teeny, teeny little district because this is in the downtown heart of Chicago, okay? So I can click around and look at, you know, different, where these different districts are. And it'll tell me also the number. It's telling me the sum of, of, of the number of people who are Black non-Hispanic. Okay. So in other words, it, it told us in the instructions under step, I think we're in step five, we're clicking on the D10 box and you can see where that is, D10 box. And if you want to see, you can actually click here in the map and you can zoom in and zoom out and see that a little better if you want to. So again, 10 is going to be this little blue one right here, right? Hey, Karen, it's yeah. Naomi. I have a question for you. I don't know if you're familiar at all with Tableau, um, but in Tableau, you have to very explicitly connect which things are connected with what and what filters. This looks like you just drag and drop and it's automatically all connected for you. Can you speak to that a little? Because that's really cool. Well, I mean, these are all in the same layer. They're in the same shape file, right? So these are, we only have one data set so far. So there's nothing there's nothing to connect. I mean, I think when we start bringing in other data sets, then we have to kind of tell it what's lining up with what. But it really does use spatial location as a key a, a key piece of it. Um, but again, so far this is a shape file that has all this information, and. And so what we've done is we've just pulled data out of the same shape file and just as a shape file it knows that attributes connected to right to to feature so it's really just doing that now tableau you tend to not work with map you know you're not working so much with shape files you're working with tabular data so you have to then connect and tell how the spatial aspect is working usually it's by like state name so you can pull you know you can pull data that's about you know it has to have state and then it's going to drop it in that proper state or or whatever it may be it's got to have some kind of a spatial indicator i don't know if that answers your question or not but oh it does no thank you i th i think um uh and i see michelle commented in the chat it even okay. kept the same color yeah which is like they are the same color really cool automatically so 11 is that same color 14 is the same color so yeah it's pretty cool okay so when you, um, so we're just clicking on other, so it's step six, just click around on other boxes. If you want to kind of clear it, you just click out in the base map and then it all clears, right? So if you're clicking around um, and notice when you click on the map, it, it also, uh, it changes what you're seeing in the, um, in, in the tree map. So it goes both directions, right? Okay, um, so step seven under create chart says to click Features on the map to see how selecting the cards is bi-directional. I just did that. Um, and you deselect features by just clicking on the base map and then everything gets selected again. Okay, 
So we created a tree map to visualize the filter of Black non-Hispanic voter, voting um, age. The tree map is one way to visualize it, but we can also create a bubble chart, which is another way. So I'm going to click now this time on district and white um, non-Hispanic population. And I'm going to pull it over onto the chart. So again, I'm going to pull it over into a new chart, or a new place, and I'm going to pick chart, and I'm going to pick bubble chart. So again, this is just clicking and dragging. So I'm going to I'm going to just come back here and do this again, just so everyone knows. So I clicked, I, I select district and white, the, the white non-Hispanic 18. I click and I hold down and I pull it over and I drop it into an empty, come on. I drop it into an empty space on on the mat on the workbook, um, and then I pick. I, I'm still holding it down and hovering over chart, and then I, I go to bubble chart, and only then do I let go. When I let go, it creates a bubble chart. It's a lot of it's like that: clicking, dragging, and getting it in the right place, and then dropping. Okay, so that's a bubble chart, and. Um, and this is for white non-Hispanic under 18. So you can kind of see that. Um, so again, like, like the, uh, the tree map, the size of the bubble indicates how many, the total number of um, the white population. Um, the last thing we were going to do is do um, Hispanic, and then we're going to make another kind of chart, a donut chart. So we're going to pick the, the Hispanic, um, Hispanic and district. And again, I'm going to click and drag. Let's put it maybe down here. And I'm going to put, come on. I need to go down and look. It's not letting me do that. All right, I'm going to come back and try this again. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Now I'm going to make sure that I have Hispanic district and district, right? And I'm going to click and drag. Come on, chart. And I'm going to pick donut chart. And that's going to give me just a different way to look at that data. So the problem here, though, is that we have three different things mapped in three different ways. So it's really hard to compare them. Okay. So three different chart types, but says in step 10, because the same data type of data was used for each of these three charts, we can sh we can um, switch them to another visualization so we can more easily compare them. So in the space next to the one that's the bubble, we can come up here, okay, and we can pick the visualization type and we can say, you know what, I want this to be a tree map, just like that one's a tree map, okay. And maybe um, in the other one too, on the donut chart, I want to make that a non, a, a tree map too. So then I come to this one, I click up here and I go to the little um, visualization type and I pick tree map. So now all three of them, um are are um in the same format now notice that not the same they're not in the same order so here we have d10 d7 and d18 um but notice that you know d18 here is i hope the same color i think d18 is here and d18 is here so the colors are staying consistent for the district um, but again, it's by size. So you can tell District 10 has the largest number of Black non-Hispanic population. District 18 has the largest number of white population. And then District 7 has the largest number of Hispanic, I mean, largest number of Hispanics. Um, and they all interact with that same map. So notice how small, the, the, so the, the main um, one for Hispanic, very small. Dis district um, and same with um, the, the black population. And then you get to the white population and where do they live? The suburbs, right? So you got this huge area down here with where the highest um, population of, of the white non-Hispanic population is and it typically is in the suburbs. So, all right. So now, um, so that was kind of uh, 17. So now we're going to go on to the next section, which is calculate fields. So if we don't want to look at number of, of different ethnic groups, we want to probably look at percentage, right? Percentage is going to be more valuable to look at what is the percent of white or black or Hispanic population in these different districts. Okay. Following me? So you can actually 
add fields to your data. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do in step one under calculate fields, if you're following along the instructions, um, it says, uh, so again, I can just hold this over here for a minute. Everyone, that's where I am. Can you see that? I'm in calculate fields, step one. Okay, make sure we're all together. Um, so for, um, so you can go to this, however, the, there's the Illinois plan one in, in, the, um, in the contents area on the left. I, I think they're calling it the, what are we calling that? In the data pane, sorry, the data pane. If you go to the little three dots under data set options, and this is where we're going to want to view the data table. Okay, so you go to those little three dots, and then we pick view data table. So then we get this floating data table, which I hope you can all see. And we're going to click add field. So it's very nicely put there for us add field. So it creates a new field with nothing in it. And just right here, we get to type in what we want that field to be. And in, you'll see in this is step four, enter calculate, enter calculate function. And in here, we're going to take, um, we're going to say from the fields list, we're going to pick, we're going to get the percentage of the population that is black. So you need to take the, the black non-Hispanic, you need to divide by the total, and then you need to multiply by 100. Okay, so I'm just creating that by clicking the fields over here. And the, 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 the divide and the multiply are down here. And this is just giving me percent, right? The number of the black population divided by the total population in that particular polygon multiplied by 100. And you click run. Great. So now I have the percentage okay, for each district, right? So it's doing that for each district. Um, okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. So that, oh, we're going to call that field because we just calculated it. We're going to just click on the field name and we're going to call it percent black. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing again for percent white. Okay, we're going to click on add field. We're going to put up here. We're going to pick the white. We're going to divide by total and we're going to multiply by 100. We're going to click run. This gets, you get kind of used to the, the routine here and then you're going to click on that and give it percent white. Okay. And then finally, we're going to do uh, the Hispanic population. So we're going to again add field. We're going to take um, here. We're going to do Hispanic um, divided by total times 100. Run. And then that final column we're going to call percent. Okay. okay, so that gets us through um, number step 13. So we added and notice these are down here now in that in that Illinois plan one layer, we now have percent black, percent white, and percent percent Hispanic available to us. Right? So you see um, it explains it here in the directions. So then we're going to go on. Um, so we're going to go now to step 16 and and we can close this so step 16 says let me scroll down a little bit uh it says click on in the data pane click on percent black the new one we just added and we're going to move it over here under chart and we're going to pick histogram okay it's going to give us a histogram we're going to do the same thing for percent white and percent Hispanic. So we're going to pick percent white. We're going to pull over here, chart, histogram. Okay. And then finally, we're going to do the same thing for Hispanic. So we're going to click Hispanic. We're going to pull it over here, chart, histogram. 
and I, there's there's this little there's these little buttons. I don't know if you can see them at the bottom for minus and plus, so that if you're running out of real estate, you can kind of make everything a little smaller so you can see it. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so that's step 19. So notice um, this is taking frequency of the percent of each of these uh, in in all the districts. So there's 18 districts. Right. Um, how many times? How how many districts have a higher percent of white population percent white population versus how many districts? So over here, um, you have uh, it looks like uh, twelve districts that have a low percent of black, and you only have um, you know uh, a few that have a higher percent black. Right. Whereas white more, you have uh, more that are higher percent um, white and then Hispanic, you have, again, fewer, but it's a little bit more than than the percent black. So that just lets us see kind of the, the distribution in all the districts, okay? So then in 20, it says um, save. So you're gonna click the little save button. Sorry, 21. Okay. Uh, are any of you still following along with me? Some of you ahead, some of you behind. Good. Okay. Well, let's go. Let's go to the comparison. So the next section is kind of cool. We'll probably only get through the next section and then let you do the third section by yourself. So the next section lets us compare two plans. So if you actually look, um, so what it says is you saw how various racial and ethnic populations were distributed in a single proposed plan. So that really we were just looking at this. This map is is one plan of how the district boundaries are going to be drawn. And if you remember that that final product that I showed you, there was a plan one, plan two, and plan three, right? So there's different plans for how those boundaries may be drawn. Um, so now we're going to look at a second proposed plan, um, and specifically how the Black non-Hispanic population is impacted by different boundaries. So we want to map the second plan. So you'll start by creating a map of the second plan and styling it much the way we did the first one, and then compare it. So again, we're, we click on the, the little um, plan comparison uh, tab down below. So instead of the single plan overview where we were before, notice there's these different tabs. Um, now my computer has decided to freeze. That's where we were before and all that stuff that we entered. So now go to the second tab, plan comparison. All right, this page already contains two data sets, Illinois plan one that you're working on before and Illinois plan two and a map and two charts from plan one are already included. Okay. So notice it's got Illinois plan one and Illinois plan two over here. Um, the cool thing too that I wanted to point out is if you don't know what's being mapped here, first of all, if you just click on it, notice it's showing, oh, Illinois plan one and the percent black is, is showing in that data pane and Illinois plan two isn't showing anything, right? If I click on this one, again, it shows um, Illinois plan one percent black. And if I click on this one, I'm getting district from Illinois plan one district with percent black and percent white. So this is all Illinois plan one that's being shown here. But we have the data for Illinois plan two, including those percentages. So now we're gonna start comparing them. Okay. So we expand, I'm in now step two in the pane, click Illinois plan two to expand it, right? You just click it on, it's a little toggle. Click on the percent black field and drag it onto a map card to the right of the existing map card. What the heck does that mean? This one took me a few times. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on the percent black field in Illinois plan two, okay? Illinois plan two. I'm gonna click it and drag it over here, I'm still holding it down, and I'm going to go to map, and I'm going to drop it on map. Okay, okay so what did that do? Well, you'll see on um, the instructions, a map of percent black field represented as a colored and sized dot is now shown, but we don't really want to look at it that way. We want to change how we're looking at it. So we're actually going to go to this little um, 
the, the little layout options. So we're going to just click on that little arrow. Notice it, it goes on and off by clicking that little arrow to the right of the percent black um, item. And then over in here, and again, I'm on I'm on uh, step four. Uh, I'm going to from the layer options. I'm going to click on symbology. So you can hover which one's symbology. That one is symbology. Okay, step five, click symbology. And then on symbology, I'm going to click. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick my symbol type. Instead of counts and amounts, which are these dots, I want to make polygons. So I do that by choosing counts and amounts, color, not size. Okay. That was number six. Okay. Now I'm going to make, I'm going to change the classification. So I click on the classification button. And instead of, um, this is step seven, instead of five categories, I'm going to make four categories. So I come down here and I make that four. Okay. Now notice I have these um, different breakpoints. It's using um, natural breaks for my breakpoints and how that data is classified. If I click, if I hover over or I click on this one, the one to the far right, I see 18.23. But in in uh, in um, step nine, it tells me to change that to 20. So I can just click on here, type 20, enter. Okay, it moves it over to 20 and it changes the data accordingly. Okay. Now I'm gonna make the one to the left of that. I'm gonna click on this one, it's 5.4 and the instructions tell me in step nine, I'm gonna make that one a 10. Okay. And then the last one I'm gonna click on that says 3.9, I'm gonna make that five, enter. All right, why did I do that? Well, the reason is because the other data is broken down that way. So it's telling us you need to make this data consistent with how um, how other ones are done. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to change the color palette. So we're going to come up here to color palette because notice this is in kind of blues and grays, and this one is in pinks and, and yellows. So we're going to click this little drop down. Whoops, we're not going to do it there. We're going to click this little appearance one. And we're going to scroll down until we find what it says is the 13th palette, but it's not the 13th palette. Um, basically, scroll down to the one you have blue. Let's see, another blue and kind of a, I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Um, it doesn't have a name. You just have to kind of look at the instructions to find it. But that is the same color palette that's being used on, on the plan one map, and we're making a plan two map. We want to be able to compare them. Okay, that was step 11. So now step 12 in the layer options window, layer options window. Um, I'm going to click this little pop out legend. Okay. And what that does is it, it makes a legend that we can then fit into our map um just gonna close that just as there's this one is here so let me zoom out a little bit here you can you can again you can kind of change how these different things look come on this is a pop-out legend that was done on the first one and then we just created this pop-out legend and we can reshape it. So again, this just becomes a little bit of dealing with your real estate, right? And we can reshape this one too. So I'm going to move this guy down. Let's do that. Okay. Um, let's say I want to make this one a little bit bigger. And then I want to move this up kind of into this. So at least now they have the same categories, right? 20 to 48, 10 to 20, et cetera. Um, okay. So this is basically through uh, step 15. The cool thing, I really love this, on step 16, you can click this sync extents button. 
So now when you zoom around in this one, the other one follows. If I zoom in, it'll take me to the exact same place in both of those maps, okay? So notice there is a difference in this area of Chicago, right? So here we had in plan one, we have two areas where the percent black is higher, but in when you come to plan two, you start to see a little difference, right? It, but because of the way the, the lines have been drawn. Okay. So that was step, ah, what step was that? Um, 16. Okay. Oh. People still with me? Okay, great. So now we can create charts for a second plan. So because we have these charts, for the first plan, we can actually create these same charts for the second plan. Okay. And I didn't rename it yet. Eventually, I'm going to rename this plan two because the card, this card here is actually plan two and this is plan one. Okay. All right, so create charts for the second plan. This is what it looks like on the instructions and I'm going to be on step one there. So if you're following along the instructions, we're now at create charts for the second plan. Okay, so we're going to, in um, plan one, we did percent, we did a histogram of percent black, we did a, a line graph of percent white, and we're gonna compare them. And it's gonna look much like this one right here, but this one is for, for um, plan one. So we're gonna do that for plan two. So in plan two, we're gonna have plan two selected here. We're gonna pick percent black. Okay. And we're going to drag it into a histogram under the map we just made. So we're going to drag this one under here and we're going to make a histogram. Okay. So and notice it is different than the histogram for plan one. Okay. Um, so it's a default color orange. So now in step two, we can actually change the color. So we go to the layer, um, the layer options, this button and we change the color. And we're gonna actually change it. It's telling us to change the color and it's giving us the code, which is DDCBBD, uh, DDCBBD. Right. Don't worry about this if you don't do this part, it's not that important, but that changes it to kind of a, a tan color, okay? Um, Uh, and then, so step five, we close the layer options, and now we have the histogram that compares. Um, we can we can look at this histogram and this histogram together, right? This is this is plan one, and this is plan two. Okay. Um, in the second plan, the number of districts with ten to eighteen percent black non-Hispanic has increased compared to the first plan, and the number of districts in the intervals on either side. Um, three to 10% and 10 to 25% have decreased. So um, the next thing we're gonna do is under, we're gonna do, we're gonna take, we're gonna create this chart, but for this plan. And again, just to make things, I can call this plan two, so people know what's what, okay? And this is also plan two histogram. So then I can take under step six, it says take uh, under, make sure you're under Illinois plan two. I actually made that mistake earlier. We're gonna take district. We're gonna take percent black and percent white. Okay, and we're gonna drag them over here and we're gonna make a combo chart and then let go. And it's gonna create a combo chart. Okay, looks quite similar to the one here. That's a combo chart as well. Uh, and we're gonna we're going to now uh, change the color. We're in step seven. So we are going to layer options, step eight, layer options and change the symbology. In this case, it's telling us to, uh, I'm just gonna go through this under the appearance tab, the layer options, appearance. We're going to change the symbol color to oh we're doing the same one ddb same one we just did 
DDB, no, DDC, BBD. Okay. Same color as the other one. Okay. And we're going to change, we're also going to change the color of the um, the line here. So again, I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to change appearance. I'm going to make that outline color. Sorry, down here. I'm going to change that color to 9999. Okay. And there we go. Okay, it just makes it a little lighter of a dark, of a of a color. Okay, so at least now these two are the same colored bars, and these two are the same color bars. Okay. So now we've configured a combo chart. We can compare the chart with Plan One and Plan Two. Okay, uh, the one thing we didn't do. Oh. One thing I skipped is we're supposed to make it the same, uh, synchronize the x axis axes. I sort of forgot to do that. So we're supposed to do that on both of these. So I think um, under here and then here. Yeah. Click the syn synchronize axes. And that's just going to make it so that the values are the same on both sides instead of different on both sides. So we did that here. Um, it was already done here. Okay. So that just means the 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 graph, the, the sort of line graph here and the bar graph here have the same values instead of and a different axes on either side. Okay, so that's that synchronize x axis. Sorry, I skipped that step nine. I got ahead of myself. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can um, just like notice here that there's no title, you can click this little button here and it hides the title of the of the card, which is kind of nice. All right, we are now that was step 13 step 14 we are hiding the card on both of these. Okay. Um, step 15. Click the title area of the comparison map. Uh, and we can adjust the size of the map. So we can come up here and then we can pull it out a bit farther. However, we want to do that. All right, reposition the comparison map legend to the right corner. Okay, make sure this one's kind of in the right corner. Okay. And those are looking really good. So I'd say at this point, I want to save. Save, 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 right? Okay, and then there's various text on on what you're really looking at so feel free to read that the the final one is uh getting near the final the next step you're going to update uh analysis with another proposed plan so you're going to do this um under plan comparison we're going to add data for the third plan and then we're going to see how we can look at our data in a visual way and then we can replace we can update the data we put in for plan two and and insert plan three so let's do that and then we're going to have to call it a day and i i encourage you to go ahead and finish all the way to the end uh, this was really to get you started some of you are probably going much faster um yeah good so i know some people have to leave that's great just just continue on your own right you don't need me to go through each of this all right so if we are going to um the next section which is update analysis with another proposed plan looks like that right we're about a little more than halfway through the document so we go to uh add page so the add page is this big plus sign in the upper left we're going to upload another file and this time we're going to upload file 
we're going to browse our computer and this time we're going to pick that um, Illinois plan three zip this one. That one. And it shows up here Illinois plan three. Notice that if that zip file had several layers, all the layers that are inside of it would show up here and you would pick which one you want. This just happens to be a zip file with only one shape file in it. Okay. So we click that and we on uh, uh, step three, we click add. And what did it do? Well, all it did is added, notice now we have Illinois plan three, Illinois plan two and Illinois plan one. Right? We have all three of them. Now, the cool thing that we're going to do is we want to actually build out another set of the same type as we did for, for plans one and two. And we want to create the ones. Okay, so can the charts be downloaded in a JPEG format? Well, that's a good question. Um, that I don't know. So, Emilio, I. I'm not sure if you can actually output these in another format. Card options and if the edit, no. Order trash, no. I'll see what I can find out about that. Okay. So the cool thing is, so here we have all this, right? We have plan one, we have plan two, we have all our charts, but we can look at this in an analysis view instead of our page. So if you scroll to the right, that right near the end, there's this thing that this button that says analysis view. And when you click on that, it actually shows you all the steps that we took to get what we have. Now, notice the first one we just did, we did aggregation style histogram. Actually, it was already there for us. But in our second one, we needed to do that calculate field. And then we did those steps. And these are what we, this is what we have. So um, now if we look at, step five in the oval for Illinois plan two, we're going to change that and replace it with Illinois plan three so that we can compare one and three. So we're just gonna look at plan three instead of plan two. So what you do is you click the update button. And for the data set, we're gonna pick Illinois plan three. And then we just need to make sure because it has kind of the ability to map um, fields. We have the exact same fields, so there's no problem there that we're not doing any changes here. And whenever we're ready, we click the update button. Okay, so now Illinois plan three, it actually did those percent black, percent white, percent Hispanic that we had to manually do last time. It just because we replaced in this analysis view, we replaced that second data set with plan three, it went through and, and did the calculate field and did that and now drew that. So now we can go back to, we can click on this page view. And now I said plan two here, but actually now this is not plan two, right? In fact, I probably shouldn't call it plan two. I'm going to say plan, I'm going to call it alternate plan, right? <laughs> Enter alternate plan because we changed it to plan three. And if we click on it, notice that what's selected over here in the left is now Illinois plan three. It is no longer plan two. And if we click at the charts under it, again, it's showing up in plan three. Okay, so we just replaced this, this, and this with the data from plan two with the from the data with plan two to the data of plan three. Okay, so it lets us look at a different viewpoint, right? Okay. So and now in step nine, it asks us, it asks us to go back again to update the second database so that we're comparing plans one and plans two, two again. So actually we can go, we'll do it one more time. We'll go back to analysis. We'll do this um, data set on Illinois plan three update and we'll call it, we'll go back to plan two. Now, when we go back to our page view and it's rebuilding it, but again, note that if I click on 
my alternate plan here, it's actually back in the under Illinois plan two, not plan three, which has gone here. So it's not plan, you can tell by the highlighting that it's in plan two, plan two, and plan two. Okay. Karen, yeah. this is Naomi. Sorry, yeah. can you uh, can you please show the how you can see that? What with the highlighting? Can you show it one more time? I know you've showed it several times, but I'm still missing it. When you click on Plan Two, and then it shows you where in Plan Two. Not that it's bold, but over here in the analysis window. No, no, in the oh. page view. In uh, then in your table oh, right. contents okay. there on the left. Yeah, I got it. So if I click on this map here. Huh. Notice so you see this just this little um, blue line. There's a little blue line, right? Oh, okay, okay. And notice okay. that the percent black is highlighted. Okay. Because that's what's mapped. If we come over here, the percent black is what's in a chart, and that's showing up again under Illinois Plan Two. And if we click this one, it's got percent white, percent black, and district, and that's this one. So, I see it now. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So it's a little. It's subtle. Hey, Karen, I found an answer to the question about exporting the images. Oh, cool. Apparently, it's on their list of features that's currently being worked on. So this is new enough that um, it's not something you can do currently. So you might want to consider doing like a screenshot or a um, like a if you have Windows, the snipping tool to snip the things you want. OK. All right. And then, of course, at this point, it tells us uh, under step 10 that we should save our workbook. So always click that save. All right, so I actually, I can't stay all the way till four. So what I, I ask all of you to do is to go ahead and do the next step, which is really interesting because it's adding tract level data. And you're, um, so it's that other button down here. So there's the single plan overview, it's a tab, then there's the plan comparison, and then there's a track data. And notice there's nothing there yet. So it's going to walk you through adding, you're going to add data from the living atlas. So again, we're going to do, you know, the add page, we're going to click instead of upload file, we're going to click living atlas. Right? So we're going to use data from there. Um, we're going to search under race. And what this is going to give us, it's actually the top one, I think that comes up. Yeah. Uh, what this is going to give us is um, it takes a long time because it's it's adding census track data that's very detailed um, for the whole country and actually the whole world. Maybe I picked the wrong one. Anyway, be careful in what you pick. Um, we're only going to select it out for uh, we're going to come to oh, whoops to state and we're just going to pick it for. Um, sorry, I think I picked the wrong. I, I think I picked the wrong button because I was doing it too fast. In any case, go through this one. And what you're going to end up with um, is, uh, let me, well, let me just say that once, once you have, um, I want to get rid of this one. I'm going to come back to my plan comparison. So under my plan comparison that I had here already, if I were totally I'm so now I'm going to kind of go off script. So please continue on here. But what I want to share is how you actually share this information. So once you have saved what you're saving, you can come under here. I can like if I want to if I want to share this particular view of my information, I can click share. And this is where uh, this is much like we've done with any web map, web app. So those that have learned about that, this is where you share. You give it, you know, I can just say Karen's Illinois map, uh, and I would call it comparison map, and give my initials or something. And then I can share it. Whoops, I can share everything, but I'm going to share it with UC Davis, which is our group, right? Um, and then once I share, it gives me a URL that I can let other people look at. And so again, I'm doing this early. It's not what the instructions have you do. They have you share when you're at the very end. But I just wanted to be sure I show you how you do that. So once you pick that page and you share it, you can um, you can embed. It's got a URL for embedding it, like in a story map. Okay. 
uh, you can uh, view it, your shared one, you can access it. So if I want to view those pages, and now I could actually give this to all of you. I just created this one. So I copy and I paste this. You should be able to click on that and you're going to get my data, right? You're going to get to see this. So again, the value here too is that you have been able to create something you're using. I'm using all other people's data. I can add fields, I can add charts, I can mess with maps, and then I can share it. Okay. Um, I wanted to add that the uh, the previous one that I had, um, let me go here. So the actual one that I did that has all the information from that last section um, is actually, I'm not going to go there, I'm going to go to content. So I can go to the, the one that I created this morning that has the final one. I can share that. I, I shared it with the organization. I can, um, if I open it, I can always take that the URL when it opens. There it is. I can copy and I can also come into here and paste that. So then all of you can see that you can interact with and and see the one that I created that's the actual that's the end of the of the um, of the exercise. So that's I'll stop there just because of time, but feel free to finish the end, you know, go through the end of it. Look for other exercises on insight and have fun. This is really fun. <laughs> Okay. Do you have time for one more quick question or are you running right now? Sure. No, I, I, I'm I, okay because I'm already on campus, so I don't have, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, do you know, are you available, are you, can you use any geometry you want? Can you make your own lines and put them in here or are you limited to pre-existing like counties? I mean, you can bring all your like own that. data, like if you have your own shape files, if you have your own, you know, anything, you can, you can create your own and bring your own data in, yeah. I mean, that's very cool. <laughs> I'm 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 just thinking about um, you probably want all of your spatial data to be in the same coordinate system. Yeah. So, you know, if, if they're in different coordinate systems, you might run into issues. So, okay, yeah. That's wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Karen, for doing this. Uh, this was really fun to see how it's um, clearly very well thought out. And I think both Naomi and I had fun clicking around on the map and seeing how it reacted and that everything was pre-integrated for us. This was this was great. So thank you. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to learn this and then share it with us. Um, yeah. So just proof, you don't have to be an expert at something. You could learn no. a skill and come teach it to other people exactly. right away. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly the point. Thank you, yes. Michelle. That's like the main point. Yeah. You become an expert just because you know more than everybody else uh, that you're talking to. So, but I, I am by no means an expert, but it's pretty easy. Uh, that's the point. It's easy to use. And as Naomi was asking, you know, you can have your own data and you can start exploring your data using these tools. All right. Well, thank you so much again. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording and then you can run off to your, your next thing. So okay. we really appreciate it. Sure. Sounds great.